That's how Aziz Pahat's peers remembered him. He has been hailed as one of the key architects of South Africa's foreign policy. It's a sad day for all of us uh, practitioners uh, and those who are following uh, the implementation of foreign policy in South Africa, uh, which has everything to do with what Aziz represented was one of the architects of that foreign policy and one of the key people in ensuring that it is meticulously implemented. Uh, you wouldn't fault Aziz on anything that has to do with foreign policy. Any complicated problem that you wanted to solve, Aziz would be there. Think it through, work through others and with others, and make sure that it delivers. Nobody would have thought that somebody could be entrusted to go to Iraq and talk to Saddam Hussein and his people to offer South Africa's assistance in establishing whether there is any weapons of mass dis destruction. He says there are a number of lessons that aspiring diplomats can learn from this giant. Well, the best way we need to do uh, to keep his legacy uh, alive is to make sure that uh, those who are the current practitioners who are in the cold face of the implementation of our foreign policy are properly prepared to have the necessary diplomatic skills to navigate very difficult terrains and be able in the end to make sure that uh, uh, our objectives or what we want to achieve actually does happen. There's a lot of uh, serious diplomatic skills uh, and therefore we need to uh, skill our diplomats, train them uh, and make sure they understand why that if you think that diplomats, if you're in Dirko, that is a job, you're in the wrong place. International Relations and Cooperation Minister Naleda Panda says diplomats have been drinking from his well even during his retirement. This was a, a great freedom fighter, a fantastic personality and someone who has had a sterling role in the history of South Africa having joined the struggle against apartheid as a very young man coming from a community that we might not often believe would so firmly be involved in the struggle against apartheid. He came from a political family as you know his brother was Dr. Esso Pahad and the two went into exile uh, together. But uh, I think Aziz stands out as an internationalist, as someone who was so committed to the cause of international relations and actively gave his life and dedicated it to building international links throughout the world. I think the character of South Africa's foreign relations was shaped very much uh, by him. I did have contact with him after I took up this office. President Cyril Maposa has declared that the late former Deputy Minister will be honoured with a special official funeral, Category 2, on Saturday. He served as Deputy Minister from 1994 to 2008. He has also, before that, he was a freedom fighter, so the freedom that we're enjoying today is also part is the benefit of his uh, uh, contribution and the sacrifices he has made uh, to for this country for us to be free as Africans. So, as the government and cabinet, we extend our condolences to the uh, to the family and friends of uh, the late uh, uh, diplomat Aziz Pahad, but to his uh, ruling uh, party, the ANC, who he served the longest, also both as a young man and also as a leader of the ANC.
Can I ask Colonel Maluleka from the South African Police to come, come to the stage, please? Colonel Maluleka? Oh, there you are. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, an announcement will be made for the arrival of the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa and the family. The President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, will be welcomed by the national salute which will only be acknowledged by the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency, Mr. Estheral Ramaphos. No, he's in your
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa and the family have arrived. Please rise. You are kindly requested to remain standing until after the national salute.
may be seated. Thank you very much. Before we start the program, let me just introduce my fellow director for this morning, former Director General in Health and, and International Affairs, Dr. Dr. Ayanda and Saluba. My name is Faisal Randera. My name is Faisal Randera. Okay, I, I assume everybody heard Ayanda's name being mentioned, right? Thank you very much. Can I, can I welcome the Premier to come and welcome everybody, please? Thank you so much, uh, program directors. Uh, truly appreciate the opportunity. The presence of our president, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, the presence of former presidents, the presence of ministers and former ministers, the presence of ambassadors and former ambassadors, the presence of business leaders, traditional leaders, the presence of young and old people is an affirmation that today we are bidding farewell to a person of impeccable credentials, a freedom fighter and a diplomat. On behalf of the people of Gauteng and all its institutions, we bow down to honor and appreciate your presence. We join you and many others across the globe to extend our heartfelt condolences to the family and comrades of Comrade Aziz Bahat. We are saddened by his departure, but proud of his work and teachings. The sun went down with a true leader of our time a very dignified member of our movement and the party, the one who placed his entire life at the service of his country and people. We stand here to declare that what we used to appreciate and cherish has left us. Our minds may function, but our thoughts are troubled. Death has robbed the people of our country of one of its finest sons, who valued the freedom of his people more than his own life and personal comfort. It is difficult to describe the pain more than a fellow comrade, he was part of our well-being, our surroundings, and our work. Comrade Aziz, ours was to marvel at our dedication and hard work. Comrade Aziz, ours was to appreciate your humility and commitment to our cause. Comrade Aziz, ours was to appreciate the role you played to serve and service our people and the world. Go well our beloved brother, even though you are leaving us with a huge task to match or exceed the good work that you have done within and with your generation. Fellow countrymen and women, let's release him. He played his part, ours not only to shower him with praises, but to learn from his contributions to our cause, to take leave from his character, belief, and teachings. May God be with your family and friends and those that work closely with you. Go well, my beloved uh, diplomat. Go well, cater for our movement. Go well, my leader. Even though the struggle for a truly non-racial and prosperous South Africa may be under threat, be assured betrayal 
is not an option. Lala Wankol. Today, to bid farewell to our friend, our former Deputy Minister, our member of the ANC and the Communist Party, Aziz Bahad. Um, before we proceed, let me just acknowledge a few people. I know there's many people that I've seen this morning. Ah, there are many people in the audience today, and everybody is very important, but I'm going to acknowledge a few people. So let me start with our president of the country, President Sir Ramaphosa. Welcome, President. Thank you very much for being here today. Let me then acknowledge former President Thabo Mbeki and Mrs. Mbeki, and also former President Halema Motlante and Mrs. Motlante. Thank you very much for being here. There are many ministers in our audience today, and let me say welcome to them as well. Premiers and, and uh, MECs from the provinces who have come here today, you're all welcome. We, of course, have many members of the diplomatic community present. You, you two are welcome. Let me then acknowledge the family members. Firstly, Angina, Aziz's wife, who's here with us today. And of course, Sam Gurney, who has come all the way from London, Aziz, the son of Aziz. I know he was not able to bring his, his daughter with him. Um, but, but we must her today. There are other members of the, of the Angela's family here and, and, and Pahad family here. Let me acknowledge all of them present. Of course, the one brother that remains standing, as he said, as he reminded me today, is Nasim Pahad. Welcome, Nasim. I can't but remember that, that a few months ago we said goodbye to another Pahad brother. Minister Isu Pahad, and let me welcome Mag Pahad and, and, and her family here today as well. Thank you very much. Let me also acknowledge the, the South African police and the SNDF present here today. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for being present. Let me then, you know, from the time that Aziz passed on, on Wednesday evening, there's been, sorry, there's been many messages that have come through. Some of the words that have been used to describe Aziz, I'd like to capture today. He's been, he's been, it's been said that he's been a, he's had great political insight and a wonderful sense of humor. A great strategist, a lifelong freedom fighter, someone who showed great empathy and integrity, someone who, with his loss, makes the country poorer, a true son of the soil. His grasp of politics was unparalleled. Somebody described him as a cheap whip of deputy ministers. He had huge wisdom and intellect. A, a former minister described him as someone with impish humor. Of course, Aziz was a lover of parting and, uh, and jazz. And somebody described and said, 
a big tree has fallen. Before I ask the first speaker to come, I just want to read something from Aziza's book that came out in 2014. It was called An Insurgent Diplomat. And in his concluding chapter, Aziz said the following. History is replete with the tragic consequences of progressive political parties that fail to respond to the needs of ordinary people. Ultimately, we are servants of the people, and we must be honest and sincere in the face of our manifest failures as stewards of this country's democracy. In short, we need to reclaim the ideological and political centers of gravity that have shaped the Congress movement. He went on to say, our desti destiny is inextricably interwoven with that of the African continent and its people. Let me then call Ambassador Walile Ntlapo to the stage. Yeah. Walile has been a lifelong friend of Aziz's. Of course, some people will say that with George Nene and Aziz, they were the three musketeers so, of, of foreign affairs and the policies that were developed in that time. Ambassador? Could we also just uh, uh, request the driver of a uh, car, JP607, Six zero Z T G P, J P six zero Z T G P. Please kindly remove it. Sure, this technology is revolting. Uh, program directors, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Well, thank you, Commodore Twizel, for making my life easy by acknowledging all those who are here that needed to be acknowledged. But allow me to pay my respect to the President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa Enda. Uh, let me also, in the same way, extend my respect to former President Tabombegi and Sis Zanelle, and Khalima Mutlante. Uh, I think I'm going to upgrade somebody today and say Sis Kuku normally called uh, Mrs. Mutlante. Uh, the Speaker of Parliament is here with his uh, entourage from that institution in which Comrade Aziz also served. And I think it will be not good of me not to acknowledge them in a manner quite familiar to them. Or the <laughs> but let me also say welcome to all the ambassadors that I've seen here. 
and the former ambassadors of the Republic of South Africa. We served under uh, Aziz Pahat, and all the comrades and friends that are here with us today. It is indeed with a heavy heart that I convey my condolences to my dear sister Angina and the entire Pahat family. Many of us who are here present and those who are absent will have to live with the sad and painful reality that Aziz is gone to have his eternal rest. A well-deserved one after what he has gone through. The last time I saw Aziz, it was at this same venue, at the funeral of his brother, Isop. I was sitting somewhere there when his convoy arrived uh, in his what he normally called a prem, which is, was his wheelchair. They stopped a bit and I went to greet him. And he said to me, when are you coming home to see me? Uh, because that bottle of vodka is still there. <laughs> and I said, uh, Rest assured, I will do that. Unfortunately, that never happened until I am here. The floods of tributes that we witnessed since his passing informs us that he has made a lasting impression on many people, both here at home and abroad. Indeed, his revolutionary spirit lives on. When I met Aziz for the first time in 1977, in, 1977, in our camp in Novakatanga in the south of Angola, he was accompanying Dr. Dadu, who had come to visit us there. But I also had the rare honor and privilege to work with him in London, in the Department of International Affairs of the ANC, the Department of Foreign Affairs. Little did I know that on a day like this, I will be standing here to pay tribute to him at his funeral. Aziz was an exceptional embodiment of underground principles and a master operative. He valued his contacts and understood the need to protect them in the rustic tasks that he assigned them. He placed the highest value on secrecy and the need to know rule. He became a trusted confidant to many in the leadership of our Revolutionary Alliance, and that is why he was entrusted with some of the most sensitive tasks in our movement. Aziz was very resourceful and organized, though sometimes he appeared chaotic. He was particularly meticulous in the gathering, processing, and use of information. He was a prolific reader, a good listener, and one of the best note takers that I've ever come across. And this is because he had a profound respect for knowledge and institutional memory. He possessed a sharp and analytical mind 
but also believed in practice in order to bring about change. This is what made him a genuine Marxist and a good communist, as Ronnie Casserles will attest. He understood the importance of building lasting relationships with diplomats from all geographic regions, hence his deep understanding of geographical realities. He knew and made friends with many diplomats who were accredited to this country and paid particular attention to their interests and needs. He never missed an opportunity to engage them and very often organized farewell functions on their departure. Ali Aziz believed in imparting knowledge and investing in young people. I've seen some of them here. And made friends to many and often insisted that they call him by his first name. He sometimes did the same to his immediate staff and subordinates whilst commanding their utmost respect and loyalty. His obituary is a testimony of the values and principles that shaped Aziz, the Aziz we came to love and respect. We proudly say farewell to a modest, caring and sharing person, a mentor to many young diplomats and cadres of our glorious movement. A committed patriot and preeminent Pan Africanist who loved our continent and paid the greatest respect to its people. We shall miss his deep sense of humor and genuine friendship. Hambagatlem Konto, Lala Ngokolo. Great George Nene, Jake Isilibi, Billy Masetla, Ronnie Mamwepa, and the many martyrs of our struggle and fraternal parties. But do me one last favor. Tell Judge Nene that indeed I've been receiving his WhatsApp messages. Part of the reason why I did not respond quite often is when he started inviting me to join them. Please tell him that that is not going to happen. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and if he wants more people who are willing, I can provide him <laughs> with some contact details <laughs> of some of the people I've seen here who seem to be ready and willing to accept such an invitation. Good night, Aziz. to Aziz's life. Okay, let me then move on and welcome comrade, former minister, Ronnie Casarals, who has also known Aziz for a long time. I mean, I, I know that their, their history starts in London. They were, as, as comrade Olile has, has reminded us, Aziz was also a 
member of the Communist Party. Uh, Comrade Ronnie is, is speaking here today on behalf of the South African Communist Party. General Secretary Soi Mapaile could not make it, and therefore Comrade Ronnie is pulling in. Thank you, Comrade Ronnie. Long live the glorious memory of Aziz Gulen Pahad. Long live <laughs> Dumilang, Sunny Bonani, Assalamu alaikum. Comrade President Ramaphosa, former Comrade Presidents Mbeki and Khalima, and your dear wives. Special greetings and condolences to Aziz's partner who stood behind him, my dear comrade Angela. Thanks for all you've done for him and the whole Pahad family. All dignitaries here, friends, comrades, etc. Aziz Pahad and Comrade Sam, sorry, the fine son, chip off the old block from London, who knew which team to support, unlike your father. Shona Malanga, Shona. Through. Thanks for being here, Sam, all the way from London. But I wanted to start a promise I made to Comrade Aziz when we were having a toast to the 70th birthday of Comrade Yusuf Dadu. And well into my cups, I sang a song of sorts from, Bertolt, from Bertolt, Brecht, which I think a lot of us know. And it goes, there are those who struggle for a year and that is good. There are those who struggle for 20 years and that's better. And then, there are those who struggled, served all their lives. And those are the ones we cannot do without. Aziz is one of those like his brother Isof. He ran a good race and he kept the faith. But he said to me, hey Kumalo, if I go before you, Promise me you're going to express the words of Brecht. And I said to him, but Aziz, I'll go long before you. And then one day, we were experimenting with a rocket in Hampstead Heath. A rocket that was destined to blow up in the sky and bring leaflets to the ground. But it changed course and it came straight for Aziz and myself. And we jumped behind a tree and it blew up on the tree. We were shaken and we went to, I'll call it a local tea house, and had a strong cup of tea or two. <laughs> and he says to me, in that marvellous humour of his, he said, hey man, we both could have been caught by the grim reaper. Who then would have pronounced those wonderful words for, of Brecht's on our parting? So Aziz, 
I've kept my pact with you. But of course, as we've heard in a wonderful oration from you, Comrade Walili, thank you so much. We've heard of how extraordinary and delightful he was as a human being, a national hero and an international figure adored by those who need solidarity as we stand in the anti-imperialist camp against US imperialism and how delighted he would be to have seen here today the ambassadors from Cuba and the Bolivarian Revolution of Venezuela and so many others around the world. He was steeled in the struggle. He was firm. Aziz Pahad was as solid as a rock. And in the dialectic, the soft man, the jocular man, so beloved, a friend to everybody, and little wonder that in his enormous work, which carried so much danger, as we all faced in the struggle at home and in exile for so many decades, people responded to this beloved human being, which is why there'll be plenty tears shed, not just in our country and our continent, which as Walili pointed out, he loved and served. But wherever people struggle for justice, for peace, for security, against predator imperialism, the number one enemy of humankind, US imperialism and its allies. And that's the words of Aziz Pahad, I can assure you, in our constant discussions, him and Isop and friends. Thank you. I'm privileged to bring greetings from the Communist Party to this gathering to greet the ANC and the Allies here. And I'll come back to this, Comrade Program Director, if I may, at the end. But do we remember all the things that Comrade Walili had to say? His courage, dedication, selflessness in serving our people in a struggle which he helped so much to do to bring about the liberation of our country and beyond in terms of the National Democratic Revolution so that we should bring the socio economic equality and rewards to our people. I'm basically going to rush through the many hats that Comrade Aziz wore. But let me first say, Walili, he wasn't just the chief whip to deputy ministers. I was a deputy minister with him initially in the first um, parliament. As we know, I became a minister. He remained deputy minister for 14 years, sitting really foreign ministers from Comrade Alfred and Zo, God bless him, Comrade and Kosozan and others, but really serving our president and Becky. And he was a man who had the qualities of a minister, but, but the service to our president and Becky was very vital and he never complained, as I think many would, Comrade President and Becky. Oh, shouldn't I be a minister and wear a ministerial hat? He's had many, many hats, not a ministerial hat, but he wore these hats as a minister supreme. That was our as is. And you know, we can roll off. I counted last night something like 20 hats that Aziz Pahad wore throughout his life deputy minister, and I said he wasn't just a, 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 a chief whip to the deputies, he was a chief whip to us ministers on Kosozana. We know that very well. And not only that, comrade presidents, he was our commissar. And everybody, to this day, when it was comrade Isop's funeral and farewell, and others, at other events, you could hear the next crop, the next generation, comrade the Sufi, all paying, Comrade Phoebe and others, all paying such gratitude to the leadership of Comrade Aziz. So the hats that he wore, 
could go through them very quickly, but I think you know, and I'm getting worried about the time, I must get to my end punchline Communist Party message, comrade <laughs> President Ramaphosa. <laughs> very friendly one, let me warn you in advance. But, you know, we talk about building the underground from London, the clandestine work. At first, Dr. Dadu, Joe Slovo, they were leading that. By the time Dadu had passed on, Slovo and myself were in Africa, Aziz was the commander, and under the PMC, Comrade Tabo, he was the commander of the UK. Well, Lily, you know that well. Underground work, above ground. Comrade Sam, you know so well. His work in building the anti-apartheid movement was absolutely outstanding. What people don't know is how he helped our, our, our in intelligence and security department of Comrade Mzwai Paliso, a great hero of our country, by the way, in building the means to detect the enemy's infiltration. And in the end, back in South Africa, Comrade Cyril, Comrade Halima, you know, Comrade Mzwai had to get it in the neck. Because, of course, when you're dealing with enemy agents, you know, it's a tough battle. And he carried that responsibility and he was pleased to admit it. Comrade Aziz worked with him. And Comrade Aziz from London, and this is something I need to read out, Comrade Angina, Comrade Pahad family, which isn't very well known, but we had a large group of war resistors from this country refusing to serve who arrived in London. And they were quite diverse and also, to some degree, politically confused. Comrade Aziz was the responsible comrade to deal with them. And one of their number has written to me, reminding me as follows and writes, about that time when Comrade Aziz dealt with the war resistors in Britain and linked back to the end conscription organization in this country, the young whites refusing to, to fight, and it was a tremendous blow to the apartheid military machine. So Bill Anderson writes, Aziz was so warm and welcoming to all of us, ever watchful for the numerous security issues that arose, advising and steering the political direction of the War Resisters Committee, drawing some into the ANC. And I can tell you the ones he drew into the ANC were giving us first-class information about the SADF, their plans, their invasion of Angola, when the Cuban and the Angolans were able to drive them out from the Battle of Quito Carnival, which was a tipping point, Comrade Vesufi, in the struggle to free Africa and Southern Africa. They had information. For I was chief of intelligence. Aziz was sending it to me. I was meeting the Cuban comrades, the Angolan comrades, their military intelligence, even the president, and presenting the information, which meant that we played a role in helping to defeat the SADF from Quito Carnival, out of Angola, the independence of Namibia, the dominoes fell and we became free in South Africa. <laughs> so, comrades, another 20 hats that I could speak of, comrade Tabo, comrade Cyril and Khalima and all, I'll keep you here too long and you know how I can ramble. So let me just come to the fact that yes, I'm here about the Communist Party. It's another hat. Iskoko Ezibomvu. I hope my pronouncement's understood. The red hat. We live at a time when runaway capitalism in its highest imperialist phase has become this force that is threatening us all. Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, America, Latino, Africa, Asia, everywhere. And in terms of what we face, we can make these points, and I can assure you, and we don't make up what comrades who pass on have had to say. Comrade Aziz well understood this, and with the two brothers, we could argue that we always were at the heart in such agreement 
US imperialism and its NATO tool, and what this is doing politically, socially, culturally, economically, and to Mother Earth. And Comrade Cyril, if I can say that, Ramaphosa, our president, you carrying the responsibility now from Comrade Halima, Comrade Ndeki, Comrade Madiba, we know what it's like in that hot seat. You've got to juggle balls, etc. When we listen to you and, and what you're achieving, of course we understand. We can't just sit in the background and prattle on very simple statements. It's incredibly difficult. Comrade Nkosuzan as a former foreign minister. But key and central is that we have to unite internationally the global south and with Europe and with Russia and China and a new order. And in terms of that, if we do not, if we do not strengthen the anti-imperialist cause, make, mo make no errors, I'm coming to the end, thank you. <laughs> or are you just shutting me up? Make no mistake, they will be knocking on our door, Comrade Cyril, not as Victoria Newland, one of the most atrocious human beings, I will say, responsible and brags about the Maidan coup. They won't be coming knocking softly. They'll be coming with a big stick. And it's happening everywhere. Why is the, are the African states of West Africa in such rebellion against the French and the USA? I, I think this is really what I wanted to say from the party side. I want to just add that Comrade President, the party is very concerned about the austerity measures. It's the poor of our country that will suffer. Let me end then by saying that what we need to do as a country, if I may, as I end, is this. And it's an analogy, comrades. It's an analogy about two astonishing brothers called Aziz and Isop. They were so close they were so unified, they could have differences, but they always came to the right position. And this is Comrade Aziz and Comrade Isop's legacy. So the analogy, Comrade President and all, is what the party and the ANC and Kusatu need to follow. Is that solidarity, comrades, of the brothers Pahad? more profound than any other brothers in history. Wright brothers, brothers Karamazov, Warner brothers. It's the brothers Pahad. Let's recall that. So, Comrade Faisal, you'll be very pleased to hear that I come to the end of 20 hats. But what I can't resist saying, if I've got one minute, comrades, I wear here, hold the paper and give it to me when I get here. I proudly wear a medal here. It's the medal of the Latuli detachment, the first MK detachment. Comrade Aziz Pahad, Comrade Isop, and so many others. Well, Lily, I think you're June 16th. We're the first detachment, Comrade Tabo. You were one of us. And I'm wearing it today. I normally don't. I normally don't wear suits. But for Aziz Pahad, the diplomat, I had to come in a suit, the red tie of the party and the Latuli detachment. So let's end, let's end. Long live the spirit of comrade Aziz Pahad. Long live. Long live. Sing ama Galutuli. That was our song. Galutuli. Napi, napi. I'm Antla. Thank you, comrades.
we give Comrade Rani a big hand, please? Comrade Rani, I hope you realize that you've cut into the President's speech. Eh? Comrade Rani promised to, get, to take eight minutes, he's taken 25 minutes. But, uh, but, but nonetheless, full of history and the richness that we all need to listen to. Thank you, Comrade Rani. Okay, before I sit down and hand over to Ayanda, Dr. Ayanda Ansaluba, I just want to take the opportunity to, to thank a number of people. I don't know if everybody knows, but Comrade Aziz was, was un unwell for the last year, I would say. And during this time, he was looked after by doctors and health workers in, in Durban, here in Johannesburg. And yes, I would like to mention all of them, but I think not. But I, I would like to at least mention Dr. Abdul, who is here today, who came and spent a great deal of time supporting Anjana, looking after Aziz. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul. And thank you to the doctors who looked after Aziz. Okay, let me hand over to Ayanda. Thanks, Faisal, Mr. President. Of course, I had known Aziz over a number of years, but my close association with Aziz dates back to when I joined the then Department of Foreign Affairs. He was part of a strike force that included the likes of Weli Lentlapo, Kingsley Mamabolo, Jesse Duarte, Abdul Minti, George Nene, Uncle Billy Mudise, Kingsley Makubela, Sis Lindy Mabuza, Sis Barbara Masekela, and many others, of course, including the irrepressible Ronnie Mamoepa. At the top of this team was a trio of Aziz, Sue van der Merwe, and the person I've come to call loving, lovingly only as my boss, Minister Ngosazana. This was a formidable team enjoying the steady guidance of President Mbeki. It is now my honor and privilege to invite you, Minister Nkosazana, Shlamini Zuma. Shona Malanga Shona Shona Malanga Shona Malanga Shona Shona Malanga Shona 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 Malanga Shona Shona I uh, thank you, Ayanda. Ayanda is my boss. He's been my boss for a long time. Ministers think they are bosses. They are not. It's the teachers who are bosses. 
Uh, so thank you, he's my boss even today. Uh, program directors, the President of the Republic, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, the former President, uh, President Mbegi and Sister Nele, uh, President Wamaloba, <laughs> uh, President Kalima, Nosis Kuku. Uh, I want to greet, special greeting to the Pahad family. Anjana, Sam, and Meg, and all the members of the Pahad family. Ministers who are here, premiers who are here, the Speaker of Parliament, members of Parliament, leaders of the Alliance, leaders of political parties, mayors, councillors, members of the diplomatic corps, members of the media, fellow mourners. I join millions from across South Africa, Africa, and the world in conveying our deepest and sincerest condolences to the family of Comrade Aziz Pahat. We gather here today to bid farewell, but also to celebrate a life well lived. To a giant of our struggle, an internationalist, a geopolitical strategist, a soldier of our liberation movement, a visionary, and a diplomat par excellence. The history and the story of our liberation would not be complete without Aziz's contribution. It is no coincidence that he wrote in his biography that his life and his life experience cannot be separated from the ANC or the SACP. I want to say that Comrade Aziz has emerged as one of the finest cadres to ever be produced but in, within the ranks of our liberation movement. And I think the evidence of that has come from Welile, Roni, and many other people who have said a lot about him. I'm, I'm going to talk about Aziz as a teacher. He never studied to be a teacher, but and a mentor. Because I first met Aziz when I was in my 20s. Can you imagine? In my 20s, in London, he was part of a group of comrades who were there, who welcomed us. I arrived there in 1976. He and other comrades mentored us, taught us a lot about solidarity, the solidarity movement. And we worked the anti-apartheid movement, not only in the UK, across Europe and elsewhere. And of course, he had many other heads, which are in the interest of time I won't mention. But I want to talk to he, about him also as a, a diplomat. When I was appointed to be Minister of Foreign Affairs, I was shocked, uh, actually, and intimidated. Comrade uh, Tavo is laughing because he knows what I said when he appointed me. But I took comfort in the knowledge that Comrade Aziz was there. And many other comrades like that have been mentioned, like Comrade Dweli, Le George, and many others. And I knew that I would have an excellent mentor and guide even in that space. And indeed, I would say that he channeled his knowledge, his sharp intellect, in mentoring many of us in ways that few can. It was a privilege and an honor to walk in his trail. Um, in foreign affairs, he knew 
the international scene completely. But I want to talk about his contribution in the area in the Middle East. He was really in the front line of what we did as in foreign affairs everywhere, but especially in the Middle East. And he didn't only do that during his time as deputy minister, even during his retirement, not sure whether he retired, but uh, during that time when he left government. And in his contribution to what was happening in the Middle East and in the marginalized world, he always rem reminded us, without saying it, of the words of President Mandela who once said, and I quote, we South Africans cannot consider ourselves free until Palestinian people are free, close quote. <laughs> so the struggle continues until the Palestinians are free. And Comrade Aziz made sure that that struggle continues. He was a true revolutionary, driven by the deep sense of love for the people. And he believed that through his contribution and many others, we should bequeath to future generations a better world than the one we found. And indeed, he did that. He's bequeathed to future generations a better world than the one he found. It is up to us to pick up the spear find and continue our mission and make sure that our movement is united in action and in securing a better life for the people of South Africa. It is up to us now to release him, to take his well-deserved rest amongst the galaxy of our heroes and heroines as we launch the beautiful tapestry of his life. Hambagathe Comrade Aziz. And let Comrades Anton Lembete, Tata Matiba, Lutuli, Comrade Tambo, Nkosi Albert, open the doors for you wherever they are. Of course, Matiba said, wherever he'll be, there must be an ANC branch, so. I hope Comrade Aziz has joined that ANC branch. Of course, during these challenges, challenging times for our movement, many lessons that Aziz have left us must shape the ways we act. And may his sacrifices not be in vain. May our actions honor his memory as the finest cadre of the African National Congress. May the passing of Comrade Aziz enable us to pause and think about where we are going and how we should go. May we be like Comrade Aziz's generation. who were not only able to preempt the challenges, but also were able to outmaneuver them in a manner that delivered this freedom that we enjoy today. And may we also remember that this freedom was not free. And so we should not squander it. And we also can't be free besides the freedom of the Palestinians until nobody goes to bed hungry in this country. Until we've lifted 
people out of poverty, until we have dealt with inequality, until the, he the economy is in the hands of the majority. And we all comrade as is a victory next year. We owe them and him a victory next year. And so let's do everything to make sure that that happens. But Aziz had a keen sense of humor. He did everything with a sense of humor. Comrade Ronnie was saying he was the, he was our commissar and he was the chief whip of the deputy ministers. And you know Aziz was unique. He was very senior to me. But Comrade Tabo made him his minister and he was deputy. But he never made me feel that he should, he should not listen to me or ignore me, no. He was the best teacher I've ever had. If I turned out badly, blame Aziz. <laughs> uh, Comrade Aziz, before I sit down, used to make us laugh. He would say, deputy ministers unite. You have nothing to lose except your ministers. <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> Thanks, my boss. Uh, the man of us, these famous lines is about this doctor who told him to stop drinking. And he said, I had a very simple solution. I just changed the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll go on to some family tributes. And on behalf of the family, we'll start with Sam Ghani, as is his son. Right, so thank you, uh, Programme Director Zoro. I think I might need to have a word afterwards about putting me on after three amazing tributes like that. I think I would have rather gone first to get it out of the way. Um, this is obviously not a eulogy that I wanted to be giving for many, many more years. But even at this saddest of times, it's heartwarming to see how many of you have gathered here, our esteemed leadership, our family, our friends, and Aziz's comrades, to mourn the passing of Aziz, but also, as I'll come to and as we've heard already, to celebrate and take joy from his life. It was a life which was so well lived and had such a huge impact. The greatest sadness I feel at the moment comes from the unfairness of his passing before he could fulfill all of the plans that he and the incomparably brilliant Angina had following her retirement. But the joy comes both from my memories and from the inspiration we should all take from how his life was lived and the service he gave both to the nation and as a true internationalist. If you'll allow me a few personal memories. As is his approach to parenting could be probably diplomatically described as a bit slapdash at times. <laughs> One of the earliest memories I have is of him sat outside well, if I was looking to Roddy, I might call a tea house, but let's be honest, it was a pub. <laughs> Sat outside a pub on the Portobello Road in West London, which is where I grew up, with a newspaper and a drink. He played on my competitive streak by getting me to run around the block while he timed me on his very new digital watch. I'd get back and he'd say, go again, faster this time. So I'd run off again, round the block, again and again, allowing him to have a nice and very peaceful, largely uninterrupted drink. <laughs> An early age, I should have learned that was the deployment of his tactical nous. Fast forward about 15 years, and I got a call while I was down at Sussex University, where I was a student, following in Aziz and Aesop and, and President Rebecca's footsteps. It was Aziz saying he'd just arrived in London and come up and meet him for a drink. As usual, very little notice. It was that evening he was talking about. 
Okay, I said, which, which hotel are you staying at? No, no, he said, we're not in a hotel, we're at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> what I didn't know, and he didn't tell me at that stage, was it was the beginning of Mandela's first state visit to the UK. So I say, okay, I'll, I'll come up, I'll meet you somewhere near the palace. No, no, he says, I'll get lost, come and, come and meet me at the palace. This is a man who'd lived in London for a very long time, he, he could have done it. So I arrive at the palace, I go up to the policeman on the main gates, and I say, look, I know this is a bit strange, but my dad's staying here, apparently. <laughs> How do I get in to meet him? He looks me up and down and goes, oh, OK, go around the side. Strange enough, there is a bell. Genuinely, there's a bell on the staff entrance. I go around the side, I press the bell. Uh, another policeman looks at me, opens the door. I go, look, I know this is very strange, but my dad's staying here. He looks very, very suspicious. He makes a call. A little bit later, a very impressively uniformed ecury turns up, full gear. He confirms my story, he takes me upstairs, and he hands me over to another even more impressively uniformed member of staff, who I think, in my recollection, had a sword, genuinely. He looks me up and down, he takes in my shirt, my jeans, my trainers, sorry, tackies for South African uh, audience. I think I had an SACP pin badge on as well. He looks at me and he goes, I'm terribly sorry, sir. You're not dressed for dinner with Her Majesty. I'm a Republican in the British sense, not in the American sense. I go, okay. He says, uh, would you mind terribly waiting in here? We'll tell your father you've arrived. We'll bring you a drink and a sandwich. And when he's ready, he'll come and get you. So I walk in and sit down and go, this is very, very surreal. And about an hour later, as he pots his head around the, the door, says, this is where you've been bloody hiding. I go, come on, let's go to the pub. So we walk out. We go and get a drink. I turn to him and say, you, you could have told me what was happening. You could have come. You could have told me I was being invited. He said, I have absolutely no idea what's happening. So, honestly, to any protocol people here from, from the Department of Foreign Affairs, how you survived him for as long as he was in post, I have literally no idea. But in between those episodes, uh, all the memories of trips to the cinema, the zoo, jazz gigs, as we've heard, the excitement when he'd come back from Mission One, I wouldn't have seen him for months, he'd come back from Angola or Lusaka, Havana or Vietnam, and he'd explain as much as he could to me about where he'd been and what he'd been doing, which to a little kid growing up in London was, was both exciting and inspiring. There were so many wonderful memories of the warmth and happiness of a flat he shared in Tufnell Park with his wonderful partner, Anne-Marie Davis. Uh, we listened, listening to the comrades speaking and talking and planning late at night in the kitchen there. Ronnie will remember that kitchen. Uh, President Rebecca, you'll remember that kitchen. Helping him cook lamb chops with garlic. Just sitting on the sofa watching TV. Watching him work when I was helping volunteering in the ANC office in Penton Street in London. Going to many, many, many meetings and socials with my mum as a leading activist in the British anti-apartheid movement, my dad in the ANC, I didn't get a lot of choice in that, but it was never dull and it was always educational. His commitment, as we've heard, to the struggle was complete and unshakable. He always deployed his intellect and his intelligence in the most effective way as he engaged in the work of a movement. And as he explained to me, it sometimes didn't hurt in that work if some people didn't always see quite so far behind his highly social personality. Not that his sociability was in any way a front. As so many of you here know, his friendships and his comradeships, the comradeships he shared with you, meant a very, very great deal to him. Although he could be infuriating, when he greeted someone with the greatest of warmth, we'd go outside and after a little while I'd crack and go, look, why didn't you introduce me? You always do this. And he'd turn to me and say, because I've got no bloody idea who that was. His hinterland of interests was deep and sustaining for him, including jazz, Irish music, detective and spy fiction, football, and after his return home, rugby. Although, as an Arsenal fan myself, his explanation of why he supported West Ham remains highly dubious. But as Ronnie couldn't even convert him to the true faith, there was no chance that I was going to be able to do so. Our shared love of great Chinese food and arguing about just about anything. I'm so very grateful that COVID notwithstanding, he got to meet and play with his granddaughter, Bethan, on all of our visits, and that she got to spend time with her papa and her much beloved grandma, Angela. Although he didn't always express it, his family, the master ranks of the Pahads, the Pareks, especially Mayur, 
and the data eyes meant the world to him. This is why I should work on a tablet. Sorry. Although he suffered untimely losses, his mother, Amina, in the year I was born, Anne Marie Davis, just as they were planning their return to South Africa together in 1991, my stepsister Zinzi, and the many comrades and friends who fell in struggle or died in exile before they could come home. His joy in life always stayed strong and unbroken. And in Angina, he was so incredibly lucky to find the wonderful happiness and true partnership that filled his life in these last decades. I know it's time to conclude before Director of Ceremonies number two comes and pulls me off. I know time's tight, but to conclude, I want to paraphrase the slogan we use in the International Trade Union Movement to mark Workers' Memorial Day annually. It's right that we mourn and remember our dead, and in that today here, I include both my father and my incredible uncles, Aesop and Zanaid, who have passed this summer. But it's also vital that we take inspiration from their lives and their politics to recommit ourselves to the continued fight for the living. So it's with deep, deep pride that I say, Dad, but also in the time-worn slogan of our Mozambican comrades, Aluta Continua. And because no Pahad ever really lets an argument go, and he would never let me get the last word in when he was here, you were still wrong in your analysis on Zimbabwe, you still owe Kabin Naidu that bottle of Jameson's, and now I'm going to have to buy it for him because you've left us far too soon. Thank you. Thanks, um, thanks ever so much. As we've heard, Aziz was not well for some considerable period of time. And as part of the family and the person who was on Angina's side, as they had to support Aziz, I now invite Umbali Mube. It is a great honor for me to be standing here on behalf of the family, the friends, and indeed Dr. Abdul, the man who gave me the hardest time ever. I really suffered. He would give me instructions and say, I'm leaving this trip at around 5 p.m. Whether it stops at 1 a.m., whatever time, he doesn't care. All he wants is to see his patient getting his medication in time, as he would have instructed. Anyway, I thank him for taking me this far and giving me the knowledge I never thought I'd get ever. Thank you. I'm going to read this on behalf of the staff and workmates that have been with me along as we walk the journey. We have come so far. Now that we have reached this point, our hearts are heavy. This is a day we never wished to witness, and your departure has left a void egg in our hearts. And it is our hope and prayer that the Lord heals us and everyone affected. It is our human nature to want to understand everything, especially in times of loss and grief. But trust requires that we lean and rally also on God, even things seem unclear. To us, you aren't just a minister, but a father, a grandfather, a mentor, above all, an unconditionally loving hero. You showed us such love and appreciation. In the tiniest of things, you never fail to show gratitude. I remember this other day, he wanted to watch TV, and he said to me, is Angina here? I said, I'm not sure, but if you want Angina to come and switch on the TV for you, you can call her. And he said, but you are here. I said, okay, fine, then I'll do it for you. As soon as I finished taking the remote, not switching the TV, he said, thank you. He appreciated everything without even showing any expression that why didn't you call who that I wanted? But he loved me more than anyone else, as I have been the notorious, troublesome, 
staff member. <laughs> we learn so much in your presence, and we promise to apply your teachings as we go forward in this life. Rest in power, rest in peace, Minister Pahad. We will forever cherish the time spent and spent with and around you. Thank you. And on behalf of Umam Lizi, she, before she left, she said to Mimbali, will you promise me that you will be with Mr. Pahad or you will take care of him? I said, as you wish, ma'am, I will do as you wish. And not forgetting to mention Mam Angina, who will say, Mbali, how can the trip stop just like that? <laughs> and I'm like, ma'am, I also don't even know what's going on with this trip. Rather contact your trip. And she was like, oh my God, Dr. Tripp, while you're here. So it's been a journey for me. He made me realize who I am and be brave and be an upcoming young, good generation. And I'm willing to teach others as we go and express his love as we go. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I greet everyone. I'm Vera Zuba. I came to Mr. Pat in March. In fact, I didn't know that I was going to take care of him. I came to look after Angina's mom. I didn't even know that it was Mr. Pat's home. And then when I get in there, I saw pictures on the wall. I'm like, is this Mr. Pat's house? And then I asked the nurse, whose house is this? And then he says, come to the room. Then I went to the room and then I saw him. He was very ill at the time. But he would always say thank you. Whatever you do for him, he will never, never not say thank you. So I'm glad that I had the privilege to show my appreciation to him for what he has done for this country. I've read a lot about him when I grew up. As you know, Eastern Cape is a home for politics and rugby. So I used to read a lot about all these old comrades, and he was one of them. So when I saw him, I was so glad. So, Angina, thank you for giving me the opportunity to take care of Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you to you all. Thank you very much. Uh, we now proceed on to the reading of the obit obituary by uh, Aziz and uh, Angina's nephew, Mayor Lodia. Mayor, may I invite? Good morning, everyone. I'm Aziz's nephew, Mayur, and I was tasked with both writing and reading his obituary. This experience has simultaneously humbled me and had me bursting with pride at my uncle's achievements. Aziz was born on Christmas Day, 1940, in Schweizerenica, in an area now known as the Northwest. He was the third son of Amina and Ghulam Pahad, anti-apartheid activists in their own right. So it came as little surprise that Aziz would follow in their footsteps and come to be known as one of the architects of the new South Africa. Aziz grew up in Ferreira's town, a stone's throw away from the offices of the ANC, the Transvaal Indian Congress, and the Tabu Mbeki, Tabu, Tabu Mandela, Tambo Mandela law firm. The fam their family home was a gathering place for stalwarts of the liberation struggle, including names such as Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Oliver Tambo, and Yusuf Dadu, to name but a few. In Aziz's own words, the cumulative experiences of Ferreira's town provided the driving impulse that made politics part of my DNA. Aziz and his brother Isop were leading members of the Transvaal Indian Youth Congress and they went into exile to London in 1964. Before this, Aziz had graduated with a BA in Sociology and Afrikaans from the University of the Witwatersrand. 
In exile, he furthered his studies, focusing on international relations, obtaining a diploma from University College of London, and a master's degree from Sussex University. In London, Aziz worked full-time for the ANC and was an active member of the South African Communist Party. He played a leading role in developing the anti-apartheid movement in the UK and Europe. His leadership qualities were recognized with his appointment to the ANC's Revolutionary Council in 1967 and as the head of the ANC's political military committee. Aziz was involved, deeply involved in the talks that led to ANC's Morogoro Conference in 1969. This was a political milestone, as it was here that it was decided that all ANC structures, all ANC structures below the NEC would be open to all South Africans, irrespective of race, ethnicity, or religion. He was elected to the ANC National Executive Committee in 1985, where he served for 22 years. As he has played a critical role in the pre-negotiations and then the negotiations that ultimately led to the unbanning of the ANC, the release of Nelson Mandela, the fall of apartheid, and ultimately the birth of a free and democratic South Africa. He laid the groundwork for the first secret talks with the apartheid government that helped that held took place in the UK, and he prepared the space for formal negotiations that followed. Despite setbacks, Azim's remained committed to his vision of a just, peaceful, and democratic South Africa. This vision would come to characterize his role post-94 as a consummate diplomat and co-architect, along with Nelson Mandela, Thabo Mbeki, and Alfred Zor of the new South African foreign, foreign policy. Aziz returned from exile in 1990, and in 1994, he was appointed Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs in the first post-apartheid cabinet. He held this position until 2008 and used the opportunity to craft, shape, and implement our country's foreign policy. This ensured South Africa's return to the international fold and positioned it as a global player committed to the values of multilateralism, global cooperation and solidarity, the promotion of peace, security, and democracy, the development of South Africa and the continent, and peaceful conflict resolution. Aziz's leadership ensured that South Africa's reintegration would position it as a leader in international reform towards equality, respect for human rights and humanitarian intervention, and growing democracy on the continent. In fact, he made prior Africa a priority in South Africa's foreign policy. Aziz was a tireless crusader for peace, both locally and internationally. He co-shepherded South Africa's return to, or entry to, a range of multilateral organizations concerned with peace, security, justice, equality, and solidarity. These organizations included the G7 plus Russia, the Commonwealth, the Non-Aligned Movement, the Southern African Development Community, and the Organization of African Unity. Together with Thabo Mbeki and other senior diplomats, ideas around the African Renaissance were developed, and South Africa took a, re a leading role on the continent in the transition of the OAU into the African Union, on the new Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD, and the African Peer Review mechanism. Aziz was particularly involved in peace negotiations in Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, of Congo and Angola. In the early 2000s, he conducted negotiations with Iraq in efforts to convince Saddam Hussein to cooperate with the international community and avoid a U.S. invasion. Between 2008 and 2019, he served as South Africa's envoy to the Middle East. He served as chairperson on the South African Council on International Relations and as chairperson of the Ministerial Review Panel on South Africa's Foreign Policy. As he has dedicated over six decades to the promotion of peace, security, justice, and international solidarity. His ideas and actions have consistently been dedicated to the core values and principles of, in his own words, building a better South Africa, a better Africa, and a better world. I dare say he succeeded. 
as Jesus' contribution is recounted in his memoir, Insurgent Diplomat, published in 2014. Towards the end of the memoir, he writes, <clears throat> I have attempted to demonstrate the resilient power of dialogue and the necessity of building trust and confidence with our adversaries. If we did not pursue the path of negotiations with ingenuity and inflexibility, the ingredients of a potent brew of civil conflict would have been all too palpable and real. Aziz and several colleagues and public figures created the Concerned, African for, Concerned Africans Forum, of which you became chair in 2018. This was in response to the scope and impact of state capture and the retreat from internationalist values and the global practice. CAF became a platform for the public critique of the state of government, governance and democracy in South Africa and also of trends in the global arena. In recognition of his contributions, Aziz was awarded MK medals in bronze and silver, the South African Intelligence Services Medal in 2007, the Military Veterans Decoration Medal in Platinum Class in 2012. In 2021, he received an honorary doctorate from the University of Pretoria, and in 2022, he received the Ubuntu OR Tambo Lifetime Achievement Award. He will be remembered as a towering figure in national and international relations who consistently used his positions and influence for the greater good. His impact, both at home and abroad, is impossible to quantify, and we will never know all the ways in which he changed the lives of individuals and the beloved country in which we live. Our best tribute to him is to emulate in our own lives and actions the central commitments and values by which he lived. His relentless rhetoric will forever echo in my mind. You youth need to mobilize. As he has died peacefully on 27 September 2023 at his home in Johannesburg, surrounded by his family. He is survived by his wife, Anjina, his brother, Nassim, his son, Sam and Zarin, and his granddaughter, Bethan. Rest in eternal peace, Uncle Aziz, knowing that you are loved and missed, and that you have left this world a better place than you found it. Hambagashle. Thank you very much for that uh, obituary. I think we have picked up now that Aziz loyally served seven presidents of our movement, the African National Congress, served and acted as counsel in different ways to all five presidents of our republic in the democratic era. He did so with humility, exercise of great intellectual prowess, and an abiding faith that this republic will withstand the many trials, sometimes acts of betrayal, and eventually rise to regain its heart and place in the advancement of the cause of human progress. He remained optimistic up to the end. In my last most precious visit to him, on the 6th of this month, just three weeks ago, he exuded both his sadness and yet this abiding sense of faith in the people of our country. Little did I know then that our conversations that day were our goodbyes. I will remain eternally grateful to you, Angina, for you opening your home to me that day and may God give you and the family strength. And may the passage of time erase the pain and leave you with the many rich and happy moments you had with others. Above all, may you bury deep in your hearts the sad smiles of a nation proud of you that you helped to nurture and kept dignified to the last day, so precious a natural asset. It is now my singular honor, Mr. President, to invite you to 
deliver the eulogy. Chief Whip of the ANC in the National Assembly, ministers and deputy ministers, the leadership of the African National Congress, the leaders of various political parties, and the leadership of the Alliance and the Democratic Movement, members of the Diplomatic Corps who represent our country in various places around the world and members of the diplomatic corps will represent various countries to South Africa. Community leaders present here and comrades and friends. As Comrade Ronnie had just finished talking here, I congratulated him and said that was a very colorful oration. And he said, you know me, I'm an actor. <laughs> it reminded me, and I want to give him a task, it reminded me when African leaders went to Kyiv after we had had talks with President Zelensky. We were going to talk to the media, and I was a little ahead of him. And I said to President Zelensky, you move ahead, this is your show. He said, yes, I am a showman. <laughs> so I want to send Comrade Ronnie to go and talk to the Ukrainian showman and maybe they will find peace together. <laughs> Today is a sad day, but it is also a day on which we must collectively turn this into a celebration of a life, and in other words, we should make it a celebratory day. It is said for the Pahad family, a family that produced stalwarts of our liberation struggle. Your grief as the Pahad family is all the greater at the passing of Aziz with Isop and Junaid just a few months ago. It is a sor sorrowful occasion for the African National Congress and also the South African Communist Party, COSATU, and also SANCO, our alliance partners. But it is also a sorrowful moment for the wider democratic movement. We have lost a comrade, a highly valued comrade, a comrade who was a real stalwart. We've lost a friend as well, and a patriot who dedicated his life to the liberation of our country and its people. But today we gather here to honor his life and his legacy. It is a day of memory and we should also make it a day of reflection 
for the diplomatic community, particularly for the many men and women who worked with Comrade Aziz to represent our country abroad, who had the privilege of being mentored, as Comrade Nkosazana was saying, who had the opportunity of being counseled and trained by Comrade Aziz. Over the past few years, we have had to bid farewell to many other dear comrades, men and women who were giants of our liberation struggle. And as much as it is the nature of existence that we all have a fixed time upon this earth, we do feel the loss and we feel it keenly. Each and every one of us do feel this loss. But it is also a time to celebrate the lives of the many stalwarts who have passed on and also to remember their legacy with some informed reflection. They played such an important role in the history of our country. They were at all times during the highs and the low points of our struggle. They were able to shepherd our country along the difficult road to democracy. At times like this, one, at times like this one, when we lose another stalwart, we are shaken, as would a tree whose roots have been damaged or lost. These men and women, of whom Comrade Aziz was one, were the roots that nourished the tree of our democracy, but they were also the very roots that lie deep in South African soil to hold our democracy intact. With comrades like Aziz now gone, it does feel like a part of us has gone with them. And yet, such is the legacies they have left behind that this great tree that is our democracy abides. It continues. One of the defining traits of a comrade like Aziz was his unwavering vision. He possessed an extraordinary ability to see beyond the status quo and to envision a future that was brighter and more inclusive. He was not content, as we all know, with the way things were. It was the vision that he had that inspired many of us to believe in the possibility, yes, of a better future. As men and women like Comrade Aziz chartered our struggle forward, we faced challenges as we had to. We faced strong winds as they had to come. Times did not come with easy solutions. These times were hard. And they are today. The times that we live in are difficult and they are hard. Despite the challenges that people like Comrade Aziz faced and many stalwarts throughout our struggle's history, they persisted and were able to help our nation achieve significant changes. They have showed immense resilience, they have showed determination, and the ability to adapt to changing circumstances at all times. Due to the immense contribution to our democracy that Comrade Aziz and his generation worked so hard to achieve, it remains steady, it remains firm, and our democracy is well anchored and strong. As these comrades have passed into the next life, like Comrade Aziz has now, our great democracy that he and others helped to birth 
outlives them. It is this legacy we remember today. It inspires us and it gives us courage to go on. Comrade Aziz will be remembered for his many fine attributes and the many hats as Comrade Roni was attesting to here that he wore. A number of people have paid tribute to him, have reflected on the many attributes that Comrade Aziz had. He was a remarkable individual who stood at the forefront of change and fought for a better South Africa, a better Africa, and a better world. He dedicated his life to the pursuit of justice, equality, and freedom, and a better international relations situation. His passion and determination made him a beacon of hope for countless of comrades in our movement and in our country as well. And may I say also beyond. He was an activist who played a formative role as we had in our liberation movement in exile in the 1960s and beyond and was a key figure in the apartheid, anti-apartheid rather, movement in Europe and in the United Kingdom. He was one of the leading figures of the liberation movement who facilitated talks between the exiled ANC and representatives of the Africana community in the mid-80s, yes, working with Comrade Tabo Mbeki and many others. He was a hardworking and fiercely patriotic public servant, most notably as the long-serving Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, a position as we had he held from when we attained our democracy in 1994 until 2008. It is this role for which the South African people know Comrade Aziz best. He was a prominent voice in the foreign affairs space, an astute diplomat, a legendary networker, and for the many who worked with him, a warm and affable comrade. We've heard how through his hard work and principled stances and others ensured South Africa's return to the international fold and positioned South Africa as an actor committed to the values of multilateralism, global cooperation and solidarity, the promotion of peace and security and democratization of South Africa, Africa and a peaceful resolution of conflicts. Comrade Aziz's leadership ensured that the reintegration of our country would be based into the international community, would be based on strong leadership, on a strong leadership role of South Africa in terms of international institutional reform to create a more equal global order, establishing new forms on the continent and norms on the continent with reference to democratization, the respect of human rights and humanitarian intervention and the spirit of pan-Africanism, putting Africa at the center of the country's foreign policy. Our country's resurgent leadership role on the global stage is something that would have pleased Comrade Aziz immensely, for it is this role that he, Comrade Tabo, Mbeki, Comrade Nkosazana, Zamini Zuma, and many others worked hard to achieve. Since his passing, there have been many tributes paid to Comrade Aziz and to the role that he played in international relations arena in the formative years of our democracy. 
In this regard, his legacy is assured. As Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, he was involved, yes, in peacemaking, peace building, and mediation efforts in a number of conflicts on the continent and in the Middle East as we had. In reflecting on his life and contribution, we should draw on the words of Islam's holy book, the Quran, where it speaks about the virtue of steadfastness. In chapter 6, 16 rather, verse 96, it says, Whatever you have will end, but whatever Allah has is everlasting. And we will certainly reward the steadfast according to the best of their deeds. Close quotes. We all know that Comrade Aziz was not a man given to sentimentality, nor to false exhibitions of piety. He never laid claim to being overly virtuous. We will remember him for his dry wit and his irreverence, be it about politics, matters of the faith, or the human condition in general, or even going after the misfortune of the rocket with Comrade Ronnie going to have soft tea <laughs> in a nearby spot where they served hard drinks and soft tea as well. And yet I draw inspiration from this verse because steadfastness, unwavering commitment, humility and quiet strength defined our departed comrade and brother. As we bid him farewell at the end of his earthly journey, it is necessary that we not only reflect on a distinguished career, but on what made him so good at what he did and what we can learn from him. He gave meaning to the idea of servant leadership. In whatever role he was given, he showed steadfastness, self-reliance, commitment, sacrifice also to a great cause. He lacked ego, but he underpinned everything he did with principle. Those who have read his fine book, Insurgent Diplomat, will have been struck by a narrative that is not so much about an individual and their exploits than it is about charting of the evolution of our country's foreign policy and those who enriched it. This was vintage Aziz Pahad. It was never about him. He never sought to place himself at the center of the narrative of our democratic history. He was not consumed by the pursuit of fame, status, or of accumulation of riches. For him, South Africa was the central character. The democratic state was the protagonist of the South African story. Such is the nature of a truly great comrade. Comrades like him are servants of the people. They are willing and prepared to serve, whether it is in high office or in the trenches. They are not obsessed with titles, prestige, or being courted. Over the years, he gave interviews to talk about his book, about the country's foreign policy orientation and also to express his concerns about what he saw as the liberation movement straying from its founding values. He did not use his stature as a liberation stalwart to speak down to anyone or to level critique that was solely informed by his own opinions. Instead, he called for us to embrace each other across the race, color, and political divide. 
to put our differences aside and to work for the betterment of our republic. In an interview in 2014, he also called on South Africans of all races to return to grounds of common interests in order to build on them and advance. But beyond his revolutionary persona was also a compassionate and an empathetic soul. He recognized the importance of connecting with others and connecting with them at a deep level, understanding that true change begins with fostering a sense of unity and compassion. He believed in the inherent goodness of humanity and inspired others to do the same. It has been said that when a great man or woman dies, for years, the light they leave behind lies on the path. We have in recent times laid to rest a great many stalwarts of our freedom struggle, and today we bid farewell to one more. In one interview, Comrade Aziz said, we dare not forget that we are servants of our fellow countrymen and women. The concept of Batubili, of putting people first, is disappearing like mist before the sun, he said. So we who remain have a responsibility to ensure that Batupili does not disappear like mist in the sun, but that it is restored, revitalized, and once again stands to the center, at the center of all our efforts as public servants. For the legacy of stalwarts like Aziz Pahad to have meaning, they cannot be confined to the history books. They must be returned to again and again, learned and be taken forward. These stalwarts were once the strong roots that really held us together and firmly so. Over the passage of time, new roots have grown and new shoots have also blossomed. We owe it to the generation that paved the way to freedom, to our democracy, not to let those roots wither and die. We must return our country to the path of fundamental transformation, a transformation that people like Comrade Aziz sacrificed so much for and worked so hard for. To do so requires hard work. It demands sacrifice and putting, yes, the needs of our people first. It needs men and women who are disinterested in status and position, like Aziz Pahad and his generation. As we lay Comrade Aziz to rest today, we must be mindful of the weighty responsibility that we all collectively carry to ensure that the sacrifices that comrades like Aziz made were not in vain and that their legacies have meaning. Great nations are built through the efforts of the courageous and principled and steadfast leaders such as Comrade Aziz. Such was the man that we bury here today. To the Pahad family, our hearts and prayers are with you at this time of great difficulty. We want to thank you for sharing him with us. We want you also to remain in your hearts with a cherished memory that this nation, this South Africa that he helped to build, is eternally grateful for the contribution that he made. We as a nation say that he will be sorely missed. To him we belong 
and to him we shall return. And we say, Hamagathe, Comrade Aziz Pahat. Do pass on our greetings to those who have also left us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, both for the message and also for the decision of the government you lead to give this beautiful send-off to Aziz. May I now invite Colonel Maluleke to help guide us from this point. Thank you, Dr. Ayanda. The undraping proceedings of the coffin under the command of Captain Galawe will now unfold, which will be followed by the handing over of the South African national flag to the acting national commissioner of the South African Police Service, Lieutenant General Musikidi who will hand it over to the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, and to the family. Captain Galawe.
Thank you, Mr. President. In recognition of the Republic of South Africa, the national anthem will now be played by the South African Police Service Band. All members in uniform are requested to salute during the playing of the national anthem. And that concludes the official proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. Thank you very much, everybody. That brings the end of the formal part of this ceremony to an end. Uh, can we all stand while the president leaves the marking? part of the ceremony today. Take Aziz to his resting place. Take Aziz to his resting place. Um, he will be placed into a grave next to his brother Isaac Bahad. But before we do that, there will be a short prayer on the, on the, on the lawn outside. Can I ask members of the Muslim community to come forward and take Aziz to the Janaza area and then to the gravesite. Everybody is welcome to stay for this part. Let me also say that for those people who need some food, there is some food in the marquee outside. Thank you very much, everybody, and thank you to my fellow.
We went and letting her buy it, so we didn't have to say anything. If you all step one step back, we'll all get a better thing off the continent and the other. Are you wide enough? Can you get the coffin and the milk? Yeah, if we all step one step back, you'll get the coffin and the milk. Just a suggestion. Did you hear me, Buk? If you step one step back, you'll get the coffin and the milk. Because they all want the frame. So if you step one step back, you'll get the coffin and the milk. Yeah, you guys shop? Thank you.
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Sorry.
the spirit of comrade as his part should uh, rest in eternal peace here he's uh, made his contribution uh, which is acknowledged uh, by all and sundry yeah, a wonderful human being yes mr president what does this mean um i mean you seeing your comrades uh, people who are very key um in crafting this south africa we have today depart like this particularly when South Africa faces so many challenges that everyone speaks about? Yeah. Well, we are thankful that, uh, you know, they were in our midst and, and we can't hold it against them. We can only try to emulate uh, their contributions here. Yeah. But, you know, they deserve uh, an eternal rest here. Thank you very much. And like all of us, that's where we're heading to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was former President Khalima Mutlante there, just getting a bit of a doorstop. Um, let me see if I can get uh, former President Big as well to say something. Um, just, uh, uh, just. <laughs> Mr. President, how are you, sir? Good. No, 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 it's not an interview. I was just saying, I mean, this is someone that you really worked with. I mean, I remember when you were president, he was the deputy president, I'm sorry, deputy minister. And then, of course, for you, uh, it's someone you know personally. And outside of that, uh, Mr. President, you also worked with him before government. Yes, I mean, we, uh, we were in the ANC together. We started working together here in Johannesburg. That would be 60, 61, 62, 61, 62, not 60. Uh, and then, of course, abroad. I spoke to you. Because we're both in England <coughs> for some time, a number of years. And then, of course, came back home. Uh, no, we worked closely with Aziz for many years, and uh, he's a very. I would do if you want <coughs> somebody who would you would describe as a professional revolutionary. Yeah. That's as is. Uh, very dedicated, very committed to his work. Uh, anything he touched, he would want to understand very deeply. So he was a good thinker. Uh, so that by the time he comes to the practical steps, he's, he's thought it out what is to be done. But as everybody was saying, the youth, uh, in a sense, he, was, uh, he had a deceiving manner. You would never understand that Aziz is very serious, partly because of the sense of humor. And people who don't know what he was actually handling would think he was just a you know, very nice person. And, uh, but actually, he handled a lot of very important work of the movement. Uh, it mattered he didn't raise there, for instance, that... Uh, he was also part of our intelligence, so he did a lot of our intelligence work. Uh, a lot of the people who managed to flash out as enemy agents. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, he is one who alerted me that Craig Williamson was a, a police, a police officer of the South African police, because of he was an intelligence officer. Apart from other work that he did. So I'm just saying that to see he was a, a, he was really, really very good professional revolutionary, very committed uh, to the success of the work that we have to do, including uh, now. That's part of the why it's very painful that he lives now, because with all of the challenges we face in the country, you need that exactly as his part to be part of the team that would respond. Uh, to these to these challenges. Thank you very much, President, for your time. I know it's a very difficult for you, as you have said, your friend, your colleague, your brother. Oh yeah, yes, no, no, it's. Uh, but uh, I know what, in a sense, what was good is that we we kept regularly in touch with him during all of these months that he's been sick, uh, so that indeed we did expect that he would be leaving at some point. So at least it not come as a shock. Uh, because we, we could see it coming uh, and stayed with him as long as we could um, and he 
always appreciated that we would come and see him and sit with him around his bed and all that. Uh, because really, in a very committed person to the future of this country, in a way that, uh, very in a quiet way, uh, no attempt to be seen and to be heard, to be on camera, to be, be lauded and praised. No, no, but very, very uh, uh, detailed in the manner in which he, came, he committed, he, he, he did his work. I mean, you, you are seniors, uh, Mr. President, and we look at our country now, and then we look at people like Aziz Pahad living. Yeah. So, what's your prognosis? Well, I don't know. We have to we have to uh, respond to the challenges in the country, whether all of the problems that uh, have been identified by everybody. An economy that's declining, unemployment, crime. Uh, service delivery issues, even the ANC itself has said it must renew itself, that that must happen. Uh, so all of this have, have to be done. And then and, and many of them are, and they are not ANC issues or even just government issues, they are national challenges. As, as, a, as a people we must get together and defeat crime. I think you are in a very vantage point by, by having been a former president, so you know what we wouldn't ordinarily know. So do you think um, there is sufficient willingness and preparedness to deal with some of the challenges? Yes, sure, no, I think, I think so. I think uh, there are many, many people in the country indeed who, have, uh, who want those things, to, the, the, the bad things to end. I, I think our main uh, immediate challenge here is a challenge of leadership. The challenge of the people are there. And I think if a sufficient, strong enough leadership were given, I think you'd get many millions of South Africans who would want to engage all of these challenges the country faces. I, I think it's a, it's, it's a quest challenge that faces leadership broadly, yeah. not just a political leadership. Yeah. And I think, uh, but if the, I think, I think millions of people are ready to, to tackle the challenges. Because none, none, none of us wants unemployment and poverty and suffering and, and all of us. Uh, so anyway, thanks. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Really appreciate it. Um, that, of course, was uh, the former president, uh, President Tabon Peke, who worked very, very closely with uh, Aziz Pahad, um, expressing his views there, even going as far as to say perhaps we need to um, ramp up leadership because some of these challenges that we are facing as the country could be dealt with as long as there's enough and sufficient uh, response uh, to so many areas of policy that are affecting the country. But of course, as we see now, there's some movement and I think uh, the final prayers are being done uh, as, uh, as this part is being laid to rest. Let's uh, pause for a little.
Sorry. Uh. Okay. Let's go. Q&A. Yeah, yeah. 